In this video, we're going to derive the differential equation for the standard RLC parallel circuit, which I've drawn here. Now, we need to decide what variable, what function it is that we're going to write this differential equation for. I've chosen the V of T, the node voltage, on top here. I personally feel that's the best choice since all four elements will have the same voltage across them, but each of them will have different currents through them. So if I want to decide on one function to best describe this overall circuit, the V of T is probably the best choice. Now, a given problem may ask you for something else than that. Maybe they'll ask you for the current through the capacitor or the current through the inductor or so on. In that case, we'll talk about how we can modify things to get the, same, the, the answer they're looking for, but we're going to start by just using this V of T here. Now, we're going to use Kirchhoff's current law to create our equation. So let me go ahead and draw the four currents that are leaving this node. Uh, the current going left is going to be the negative of the source here. So it's going to be negative IS of T. Then we're going to have the current going down the resistor. That's your typical node voltage rules, the top voltage minus the bottom voltage over R. Then we have the current going through the inductor, but I cannot use node voltage for that. And at least for my first step, I'm gonna just call it IL here. And we'll figure out how we can relate that to the variable V of T in a moment. And then our last one here is gonna be the current through the capacitor. And again, we cannot use node voltage, you know, V over R for that. It's not a resistor. So we'll go ahead and just call it IC for right now. Now, one thing we know is that for a capacitor, for a capacitor up here, we know that the current through it is going to be the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage across it. Now, the voltage across this particular capacitor, Vc here, this is going to be the same as the node voltage of this. So what I can go ahead and do is I can go ahead and replace my I of T, my IC of T, I should say, with C dV of T. So what I've done is I've taken this IC, this uh, current through the capacitor, and I've written it in terms of my unknown variable V of T. The last thing we need is to now replace our IL of T also with respect to the V of T. So we need to think about what relationship do we have on the voltage and current through an inductor. So we'll go ahead and remind you of that. If we have a voltage across an inductor, and we have a current coming into the inductor, we know that the voltage is L times dI dt. The voltage is the inductance times the derivative of the current. But in my equation here, I have just the current, I don't have the derivative of the current. So what I'm gonna to do to fix that is I'm gonna take derivatives of everything in here in order to get the derivative of L, IL there in order to replace it. So the left side would be negative the derivative of IS dt plus the, I'll write it as 1 over R times the derivative of V dt plus the derivative of IL dt plus C times the second derivative of V to t twice and what i can now do is i can replace d i l d t if you solve for that you're going to get one over l times v and i'll do one more thing here i'm going to move this term to the right hand side because it's essentially our, our constant here it's our thing that doesn't depend on the v of t so i'd have one over r dV dt plus 1 over L times V of t, right? That's the d 
dil is 1 over l times v plus c d squared v dt squared equals dis over dt. And I'm just going to rearrange the order of the terms here, and I'm going to use the prime notation because it looks a little nicer. I would have c v double prime plus 1 over r v prime plus 1 over l v is equal to i s prime. And we usually like our leading coefficient to be 1. So I'll divide by c here and get v double prime plus 1 over r c v prime plus 1 over l c v is 1 over c times i s prime. And this right here is going to be your standard differential equation for an RLC parallel circuit. This is what we're going to use over and over again. You pretty much just want to have this exact formula down. And instead of having to do all the work of doing Kirchhoff's current law, you can just have this formula written down, plug in your R, C, and L values, and you get your answer. Furthermore, at this point in time, we're only going to be dealing with DC sources, not AC sources. And so if you have a DC source, then the derivative of it would be zero. And so that even becomes simpler here. And that's what you get when you have a DC source. One last comment. I mentioned how that if you are asked to find the node voltage here, this is the right differential equation, but instead they might ask you to find something else. They might ask you to find the current through the resistor. Well, if you want to find the current through the resistor, we just have the node voltage here. You could do V of T divided by R, and that will give you your current there. If I wanted to find the current through the capacitor, I could do C times the derivative, whatever formula I get. Or I can do the current through the inductor. Well, that one's a little harder because if you want the current and you know the voltage, you have to integrate it. So you have to integrate possibly an annoying expression. Turns out that since all the situations we're ever going to come across, we're going to be dealing with exponentials and cosines and sines. Well, if you divide by a number, or if you differentiate, or if you integrate, and you only have exponentials, cosines, and sines, you are still going to have only exponential cosines and sines. And so what ends up happening is, is whether you're trying to find the voltage, or you're trying to find any of the currents, you can just use this basic differential equation here, this exact format, but I'm just changing the unknown function from V to X, where X is whatever thing we're looking for. The only difference is the right-hand side might be some sort of a constant, and we'll talk about how you take that into account when solving the problem. So the key thing is, is that no matter whether you're trying to find the voltage or the current, this left-hand side is gonna be the exact same, the coefficients are gonna be the exact same, and we will see in another video that that's what's going to determine what our answer is going to look like. And this is how you handle RLC parallel.